Hey everybody, Gundam Flexing here. You know what it is. Unbox, speed build, and now the review. And today I'm going to be reviewing the YMS-15 Yon. And for those of you who are too long didn't watch, know that I bought this kit for 12 bucks. Around $15, I think this kit is worth it, but if it's around 20, I would actually, I would honestly wait. This kit is very basic, very simplistic, and straightforward. Before we go into the review of this kit, I just want to go over the extra two pieces and the sticker page. So the first extra piece is on the PC runner. Here it is, and it's just the number one. And the second piece here is your right fist open, and that's it. Not a lot of extra pieces with this kit. And this is the sticker sheet. That's it. So you have the massive sticker right here, number three, or this is number one, excuse me. And that's for the chest. And then you have two selections for the mono eye. So you have a bigger mono eye, and then you have a smaller mono eye. So I use number two, the bigger mono eye, and forego number three, which is the smaller one. Looking at this kit, he does not have any range weapons. Now you could sort of claim that his shield is a range weapon because of the missiles and bombs, but just from the visual point, he doesn't have any rifles or bazookas. So it's just this beam saber. This it looks more like uh, something that you see in fencing, and his shield. Let's look at his head. His head. Here that is. Here's the cross in the center of his helmet. There's his mono eye. The mono eye is static, so it's not going to move around. There is no color for this guy's head, so he could twist and turn. The head pieces is basically four major pieces. You have this spike. Then you have the top part right here that is, circles all the way around, and that's a single piece. And then you have the front piece on the bottom, and then you have the back piece on the back, and you combine it together uh, over this eye, and that's how you build the head. Looking at his backpack, <clears throat> very simple, it's just two jet thrusters, and here they are. Nothing to brag home about. Reminds me of the jetpack in the Rocketeer movie. Here's his chest, and there is the sticker piece right here in the center. The chest piece, uh, it's not that complex. Basically you build the inner, which is the, uh, the lighter blue, and then the cover of the darker blue goes on top. Now what I would say about this kit is the shoulders. The shoulders are very well into the joint of the, uh, the upper body. Uh, if I could try to pull this out, there it is. This is what the joint looks like. It's a single ball joint and it has a slit to go all the way up and all the way down. Here. And it's very, there we go. When I first put this, uh, uh, the shoulder joint in it, it was actually extremely difficult. I didn't, I wanted, I didn't want to like force it in there and then pop it out or break something. But there is no mobility issues with the arms. It could go all the way around, it could go up, he could even raise his shoulder as you saw, like such. So very straightforward again. Now we look at this hand. Remember on the box art there was a little gimmick that um, his hand, his wrist can't, and there it is. So if you were to put him in a thrusting motion where he goes straight forward, this is it right here. Or he could put it all the way back up. So really, when you look at this wrist piece, it's different than this wrist piece here because this ball joint is static. But here, on this hand, it is movable. And that's like on a PC piece as well. So again, you could put a good thrusting action right there. Or a charging action, as such. Which is pretty cool. But we look at the sword. The sword is only really in three different pieces. You got the beam, which is very thick. It's thicker than the other uh, beams that we have on the RX or on the other mobile suits. Then you have the cover, and then you have the handle, which is pretty long. And the handle fits very snug in his hand. Here is the shield. And it's only in three pieces as well. You have the red outer rim. You have the inside gray, which you can see the bombs and or missiles. Not really sure which one is which. And then you have the dark yellow gold color cover plate on the top. Now we look at the back. This is his handle. 
that he has, it can just fit right into the hand, slide right in there. And then you have this portion here which wraps around his upper arm, or his forearm. Now, if you wanted to pose this shield, or give it distance between the arm and the shield itself, this thing does come out and you can extend it as such, and this is how far it could extend. So, if I were to, here he is, and here is his hand, fell off, put his shield into his hand, right there, and then you can just connect it upwards, as such, like this. And then of course you could have distance, that's how much distance you could put between the shield and the hand. That's pretty cool. So they did put a good thought into the shield, and into the wrist of the, uh, for the weapon system. Now, nothing to brag home about his waist, he could turn, to us and turn, he could even like lean to the left and lean to the right, pretty cool. Uh, the skirt is pretty basic as well, nothing nothing too different from all the grunt suits of the Xeon forces. His back skirt is very large though, but this is static so you can't move it really. Looking at his legs, he does have kneecaps that are separate pieces and the knee cover here. Um, basically like a diamond shape is separate pieces as well to include the pieces in the back nothing nothing too habilitating for this guy to kick and move around his legs to nothing that will restrict his mobility in other words his leg is connected just like the other grunt suits Ooh, excuse me just like this and the PC piece into the side and and this is the bottom joint that we really consider his waist. Uh, and remember in the other uh, high grades that this piece here could lean forward, or excuse me, could swing forward and swing backwards, but this one doesn't, so. And of course, do you have the bottom part of the feet? Not a lot of opportunities in the panel line, but there are little dents, uh, little bends, and they could just fill in your colors. And of course, you have the bottom bell type of. Uh, bottom portion of his, uh, I don't know, this reminds me of something from the 70s. Here's his feet, remember in the box art that the feet is a little bit special, there you go. He'd be able to go on his toes, so if you were to put him in an action pose, like in a thrusting action pose, he could be on his toes, and that's pretty cool. And that's for both of them as well. And here, here and then we that have it open. This is the inside of the shoulder joint, so again, his shoulder and his arms are pretty, pretty mobile. It gives you a lot of options in regards to melee attacks because this is all this guy could really do. I believe in the show, the Gyan was really developed to support the Doms, which are long range weapons, and this guy is a close range weapon uh, to support each other. But that's it for this review. Again, I got it for 12 bucks. Would I get it for 12 bucks? Yes. Would I get it for around 15 dollars? Yeah, sure. If I had the money. But if it was around 20 dollars, I would definitely put that 20 dollars to uh, a different kit that you may be looking at. Because this one is very simple. That's all I have, guys. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, post it down in the comment section below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.